Here is a list of the reaction times for the men's 100 meter finals in the 2023 World Track and Field Championships. Now, this is a fairly normal set of reactions, as we range from 0.105 seconds to the slowest reaction of 0.188 seconds. Now, as many of you likely know, the limit for a reaction time is 0.1 seconds, and if you start any faster than this, you are unfortunately disqualified. I'm still upset about what happened to Devin Allen. That was a true tragedy. This time frame that we see here is fairly normal, as the overall average reaction time was 0.47 seconds for this final. And comparatively, here are the specific athletes with their respective reaction times. Up front we have Zarnell Hughes, reacting almost perfectly. We have Lacili Tabojo in close second, Christian Coleman in third, and coming in in fourth was Noah Lyles, with reaction time at 0.145 seconds. Reaction times are one of those unspoken factors in a 100 meter event that can honestly play a significant role in your overall performance. And with this race in mind, we're going to compare this to the 2024 Racers Grand Prix that just took place in Kingston, Jamaica, where we saw a slightly slower overall reaction time of 0.157 seconds from the field. However, when we take a look at the overall reactions from each athlete, we see something pretty interesting, and that's that both Oblique Seville, the eventual winner in 9.82, and Noah Lyles, the second placed athlete in 9.85 seconds, had much slower reaction times to their 2023 World Finals. And if we take their previous reactions and apply it to this Racers Grand Prix, we can see that they would have run times of 9.79 seconds for Oblique Seville and 9.81 seconds for Noah Lyles. Now granted, this is only one race, which lists both Noah's and Oblique's reactions here, but if we take a look at the 2023 World Finals in the 200 meters, we can see Noah's reaction was 0.144, his reaction in the 2022 200 finals was 0.141, and even in the semi-finals of his 2022 World Championships, Noah had a reaction of 0.135 seconds. By all accounts, Noah's normal reaction time is around 0.14, give or take a few one thousandths, and the same exact thing can be said for Oblique Seville. This is quite close to the normal reaction for any given sprinting event, but if we look at the Racers Grand Prix, we can see that Noah actually had the slowest reaction of the day, and that's because, according to a few other athletes, the starting gun was fired much quicker than most races. In fact, according to Noah, the gun was fired just barely after getting to the set position, which led to a much slower reaction time than he normally has. I was satisfied with the performance, I was disappointed in the gunman. I mean, we, none of us were even set. Half of us weren't even set before the gun went off. And uh, that's very disappointing to see, but overall, the race was great. Uh, I came out here, I ran exactly what I thought I was gonna run. This potentially explains the slower reaction times from this year's Grand Prix in Jamaica. And if we consider that both Lyles and Seville are right around 9.80 shape right now, we certainly have some amazing races to look forward to as the Olympic Games approach. And with this in mind, one of the biggest races before the Olympics is this year's New York City Grand Prix, where Noah is officially racing in the 200 meter dash. Now, it has been quite some time since Noah has run in the open 200 meters. In fact, the last time he ran in this half lap discipline, he achieved a time of 19.80 seconds to place first in Zurich. And this actually capped off a winning streak that had gone all the way back to August 21st of 2021, meaning that for more than two straight years, Lyles has been completely unbeatable in the 200 meters. However, with his newfound 60 meter speed and his 100 meter speed that is rapidly unfolding, what exactly should we expect from Noah Lyles in this 200 meter season opener? Here's a graph of Lyles' progression in both the 60 meters and the 100 meter dash. As you can see, both of these events have been improving non-stop for the past couple of seasons. And when we add to this 60 and 100 meters, his 200 meter times, we see almost the exact same story, with Lyles getting faster and faster over the years. Now Lyles did run slightly faster in 2022 in the 200, as opposed to his 2023 season's best of 19.47, which he ran in the London Diamond League meeting. However, this discrepancy was largely the result of running various rounds in the World Championships in the 100 and the 200. But considering his non-stop ability to compete in the 200 meters, pretty much no matter what is happening throughout his season, we might be set for one of the best 200 meter season openers of all time. 
If we go back to 2022, Noah actually ran a time of 19.61 at this very competition in New York City. And just a few days before this 200, he only ran a 10.05 over the 100 meter dash, finishing in fourth place at the 2022 Prefontaine Classic. With his recent 100 meter time of 9.85, which is exactly two tenths faster than his 100 meter time before the New York Grand Prix in 2022, we could officially be set to see something crazy. And while many people have speculated that Lyles has lost a little bit of his speed endurance because of his recent power, I think that Noah is exactly where he wants to be and he is ready to throw down over the 200. Now this 200 meter dash certainly has loads of talent that Noah will have to compete against. But one of the biggest names that he will be running against is Joseph Fonbelay from Liberia. And so far this season, Fonbelay has been quite consistent over the 200, hitting times of 20.06, 20.26, and 20.16 seconds. And for much of his career, he has been a 200 meter specialist, running under 20 seconds with regularity. And for the past three global finals, including the Tokyo Olympics, the Eugene World champs and the Budapest World Championships, he has found his way into the finals. So whenever he is fit, he is certainly set to run something fast in the 200. Now, I have mentioned this a few times on this channel, that I'm not a big fan of predicting times for an athlete. You just never know exactly where their training is and what they're personally aiming for in a specific race. And this most definitely applies to competitions before global championships. But for this race, once again, I simply have to make an exception. If Noah can get a good start and the conditions can be favorable for this 200 meters, I am predicting Noah to be right at 19.60, plus or minus 0.05 seconds. Given his recent exploits and his obvious ability to still close like a train, I think he has set himself up perfectly for this 200, and it would honestly not surprise me if he ran under 19.6. Again, the conditions will need to be somewhat favorable for a time like this to go down. But consider this, since 2018, which was six years ago, Noah has run times of 19.65 seconds or faster in the 200 every single year. Well, we do need to put an asterisk next to his 2020 season when racing opportunities were much lower due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But even for this season, he still ran a time of 19.76 in the Monaco Diamond League meeting. It is also noteworthy to mention that Noah is coming off a rather tough loss in the 100, and despite running very quick at 9.85, Noah was pissed, and when Noah finds motivation, he turns it into something quite powerful. So really, anything could happen come this 200 meters. And now I really want to hear from all of you about this upcoming New York City Grand Prix. What do you think is going to happen in this 200 meter dash? Who do you think is going to win, and what time do you think will be required to take the W here? Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.